Hello again everyone, Edwin Learner back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I am going to be uh, giving you my Sagittarius July 2018 horoscope forecast. And yes, this does apply and pertain to the sun, moon, and ascendant. Anyway, people, first thing up is as far as July goes, the sun will be in Cancer uh, from the uh, 1st until the 22nd. So the 8th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. So at this time, there could be a strong uh, focus, concentration of energy, um, attention on emotional, moral support, uh, taxes, insurance, uh, intimate sexual relationships, even surgery perhaps, transformation, rebirth, regeneration, even uh, sometimes psychological matters, and even uh, astrology in some cases, especially if this is something that you have an affinity for and you're interested in. Now, given that we're talking about Cancerian energy, this could be uh, done with a lot of Cancer-like sensitivity, tenacity, emotion, uh, nurturing energy, especially when you're talking about sexual intimate relationships. Uh, safety and security, such as getting insurance uh, re, uh, for, for those reasons. Um, it could also be reasons connected with um, security, protect. It could be done with a lot of protective energy and also with some intuition perhaps as well. Now, some cases this can shine the light, uh, so to speak, on a, on a surgery uh, matter, such as something with the, with the breast or the chest. Uh, area as far as uh, as far as this goes because that is the part that cancer uh, is connected with uh, so anyway uh, or the anatom one of the anatomical parts I should say anyway cancer is connected with now anyway next thing up is um well uh, as far as July goes the Sun will be in Leo from the 22nd until the 31st so the ninth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted at this time there could be a strong concentration of energy focus and attention on in-laws grandchildren uh, philosophy religion higher education publishing traveling abroad and abstract thinking even now, given this is Leo energy, this could be done with a lot of Leo-like ferocity, self-assuredness, confidence, a lot of dignity and pride, sometimes extravagance, uh, mag and with a lot of magnanimous and generous energy, and especially in matters with the in-laws and grandchildren, perhaps if applicable. Well, the next thing up is... Um, there will be a partial solar eclipse in uh, Cancer on July 12th. And of course, uh, solar eclipses are, are like a new moon. They're only inflated. They're enlarged in terms, uh, often in terms of their impact. And uh, anyway, and they could all, sometimes this could be about life altering matters. And sometimes even chance meetings, I think, even occur with this, this could, which could have a very monumental impact on your life. Now, uh, it's going to, of course, uh, the eighth house is what's going to be emphasized and highlighted for Sag. Uh, this could be about maybe uh, making a, a strong family, a home transformation. Uh, at this time, which could have really a strong monumental impact, even a family or home related crisis uh, could and in some uh, some ways, I mean, obviously could be something very prodigious and something where, I mean, in some cases, for example, could even maybe bring a family closer together. Either way, it could be something that could have a strong impact on you that could be long term. Now, it could also be a new Cancerian intimate sexual relationship may begin for some. Uh, it could be with an actual Cancer, Sun, Moon, or Ascendant, or simply one that embodies Cancer-like characteristics. Could it be a time to get some homeowner's insurance uh, security at this time? Uh, it could be a possibility. And also maybe even a new period of showing sympathetic and nurturing energy uh, to somebody that you're in an intimate uh, relationship uh, with at this time an intimate or sexual relationship you may be in. Next thing up, there will be a full moon lunar eclipse in Aquarius on July 27th. So the third house is what will be emphasized and highlighted for Sag. So at this time for Sagittarius, some cases this could be 
a completion or culmination perhaps of an Aquarius uh, maybe writing uh, it could be something connected with computers electronics something futuristic um, something connected with innovation new concepts and ideas uh, perhaps something with astrology or aerospace or astronomy some cases this could be about becoming tired exasperated full so to speak at perhaps idiosyncratic unusual or bizarre behavior from a sibling a cousin a neighbor someone maybe that may have been prominent in your early education even uh, another way this can manifest perhaps is a revelation or unveiling of something uh, maybe uh, something unusual or strange connected with a sibling a cousin a neighbor uh, at this time and and remember that we were talking about a lunar eclipse it can uh, have it's like a full regular full moon but only it can have a much stronger impact it's really like an inflated or an enlarged uh, full moon in terms of its impact and it can have life altering effects I believe and also can be in some cases about perhaps some chance uh, maybe some uh, maybe faded meeting that might uh, really have a very strong uh, really affect on you for a sustained period sometimes life-altering impacts and uh, impact or effect and another way this could manifest it could be a very strong full uh, so to speak selfless humanitarian energy into one's neighborhood it could be matters with uh, connected with um, with your local your tran local transportation it could be with vehicles and I mean these kind of and, and with people in your early education perhaps and this could be uh, something that might lead to something very strong such as such as somebody maybe seeing you exhibit this kind of energy in your neighborhood I mean in some cases maybe leads to a, a good a strong connection or someone may be able to uh, to help you in, in a very major way such as some kind of work and employment for example so anyway well, the next thing up is Mercury will be in Leo. It will be retrograde from like the 26th until the 31st. And the ninth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. So there could be a lot of speaking with ferocity and authority and a lot of conviction uh, on ninth house matters, such as higher education, abstract thinking, even in your communications, perhaps with in-laws and grandchildren at this time. Given it's going to be retrograde for like that latter part of the month, you could be reviewing uh, extroversion and gregariousness with in-laws, grandchildren, maybe people you may even know at a religious congregation, or perhaps even at some kind of college or university you go to. You might be more inclined to boasting about things that might be that you might be publishing at this time. Uh, and remember that when we're talking about uh, Mercury, it could also be about other things such as uh, siblings. And at, at this time, it could be that Leo siblings or even neighbors. It could be Leo Sun Moon ascendant people or ones that simply embody Leo like characteristics. Uh, that they may uh, factor in into your maybe your philosophical outlook uh, at this time maybe even matters with religion or maybe even uh, maybe something connected with your higher education perhaps maybe they have maybe some ideas uh, for you and um, and they could be you know talking with a lot of that Leo like self-assuredness and confidence regarding that so anyway well, the next thing up is Venus will be in Virgo as far as July. Um, I'm sorry, Venus will be until Venus will be in Leo as far as July goes from the first until the ninth. So the ninth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. Now, this could be about spending extravagantly and exorbitantly, perhaps on higher education, traveling abroad on in-laws and grandchildren. Um, it could be where maybe if you're at a religious uh, congregation, you might be more inclined to give uh, more money uh, to them, uh, to this, uh, to that, to to the uh, congregation, to the church, perhaps. Also, the way this can manifest too is perhaps in valuing extroversion and gregariousness and generosity, and exhibiting this perhaps with grandchildren. It could be. Um, with people you know at a religious congregation it could be foreigners it could be at a place maybe another country where you might decide to travel and if you are unattached uh, Sagittarius it might be a time where you might connect with a Leo Sun Moon or Ascendant 
or one that simply embodies Leo-like characteristics. It could be in a foreign country. It could be somebody that maybe you know at a college or university, somebody you meet in long distance traveling, maybe at a religious um, congregation or church, uh, perhaps. So anyway, well, the next thing up is uh, Venus will be in Virgo as far as July goes from the 9th until the 31st. So the 10th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted for Sag. So at this time, well, this could be about perhaps spending frugally uh, to maybe improve uh, one's recognition and notoriety at this time, such as maybe advertising. Uh, it could be where uh, if you're unattached a uh, Sagittarius, maybe you connect with a uh, Virgo Sun Moon or Ascendant. It might be somebody that might be prominent in what your career or it could be someone that embodies Virgo like characteristics. It could be someone too that may help you with your public image and your reputation uh, at this time. Or maybe somebody that the dominant parent, which is often uh, the father, may introduce you to. Now, also, it might be spending frugally on the dominant parent, maybe valuing health, fitness, exercise, and nutrition uh, with, it could be authority figures if you have a rapport with one or more, it could be the dominant parent or somebody that you know in your, uh, in your career. And also, um, in some cases, this could be about a love of criticizing um, maybe that dominant parent or maybe somebody that is prominent in your career or somebody that might also figure strongly in your public image and reputation if you have some kind of promoter, perhaps if you're in that kind of position where you have that. So anyway, next thing up is Mars will be in Aquarius. It will be retrograde and the third house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. So at this time for Sag, well, this could be about where you may have where your situation, perhaps with siblings, neighbors, cousins, might be a little bit more acrimonious and contentious than usual. You might be coming, there might be arguments, you might be getting angry. Maybe it's some kind of bizarre, unusual or idiosyncratic behavior, even rebellious behavior, perhaps from these people. You might have more abundant uh, of mental and physical energy at this time uh, than usual. And also this could be about energy into maybe some kind of unusual writing or maybe even some Aquarius like uh, writing perhaps such as something with astrology, aerospace, aeronautics, um, it could be computers, electronics, something with the future. And also to keep in mind that um, we're talking about um, the retrograde energy. So this could be going back to doing maybe some kind of selfless humanitarian activities in your neighborhood with cousins, with siblings. It could be matters with short journeys, such as running errands for some. So it might be something that you may have stopped doing for a while. Now you're going back to. And remember, too, people, that when you're talking about Mars uh, retrograde, it's about a lot of this. these angry actions could be directed more inward. When, you're to, when Mars is direct, it's more about direct energy going outward. But when you're talking about uh, retrograde, sometimes this can result in self-inflicted harm in some cases. It could be about perhaps, in, since we're talking about Mars uh, in retrograde motion in Aquarius, it could be about others maybe doing some harm to themselves uh, in a rather unorthodox or unusual uh, manner and uh, in some cases it could be um, it could be uh, siblings it could be cousins it could be neighbors so it's something to look at at this time a lot of this of course could depend on uh, on the aspects uh, that are made uh, to points in your chart if you've got a number of adverse aspects that this is making then it's something uh, to look at if Mar let's say if, it, if this transit is maybe making an adverse aspect uh, to your uh, natal Mars, uh, perhaps uh, that could be an indicator perhaps there to really to actually look at as a you know stronger possibility of something like this um, uh, going down so it is something uh, to look at so anyway and also an adverse aspect to natal Pluto because that would be another example because this could be more um, very, very negative and destructive uh, energy so anyway Next, next thing up is, well, Jupiter uh, will be uh, in Scorpio. So the 12th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. It will be retrograde from the 1st until like the 10th. Uh, 
anyway this could be about certain luck and fortune perhaps in conquering hidden adversaries using subterfuge and guile uh, you might be more jovial and jocular in private and solitude and seclusion and you might not be expressing this outwardly too much during this time this jocular energy despite being a Sagittarius because when you're talking about 12th house energy you are talking about restrictions and limitations also too as I've talked about previously is that Jupiter uh, can be paradoxical it's very strongly benign and benevolent but it could also have a tendency to enlarge and expand it could expand surreptitious nefarious even manipulative behavior maybe going on behind the scenes and from these hidden adversaries perhaps even at this time and also now in some cases if, if if you if there is if you do have this going on in some isolated cases it could expand perhaps some kind of obsessive or compulsive type uh situation because remember the 12th house is the house of uh, of mental illness uh at this time so and um really it could be about a lot of expansion in, in connection with those that can't help themselves and really have in being very in expanding a lot of resourcefulness as far as that energy goes with those people given that it's going to be retrograde for like the first third of the month it's going that during this time you could be reviewing maybe some kind of a very deep profound uh, philosophy that might be that might be connected with spirituality uh, so anyway uh, the next thing up is Saturn will be uh, in Capricorn and the second house is what will be emphasized and highlighted will be retrograde at this time uh, for Sagittarius Sagittarius might experience a number of restrictions and limitations financially and might be causing Sag to feel somewhat despondent and melancholy uh, you might be taking care of maybe a debilitated or sickly person maybe that you value strongly or it could be somebody that you might generate your uh, income with and maybe be play a strong role in your possessions and resources now this also too could be a situation where the father might be more prominent in one's finances at this time and remember since we are talking about retrograde energy with Saturn sometimes this could manifest in one not being cognizant of their uh, limitations and restrictions and there could be maybe in some cases almost overexertion can occur from trying to make a, a, a lot of money or over uh, or trying to accumulate resources and possessions or I mean, things like that at this time so uh anyway and it also could be where you might be feeling some restrictions and limitations in matters uh with your self-worth and self-esteem which might be causing you to feel rather dejected at this time anyway next thing up is um uranus will be in taurus still uh, so the sixth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted well at this time um for uh for Sagittarius this could in some way sometimes this could manifest perhaps in an enigmatic type health issue or the health might be somewhat sporadic and erratic and unpredictable sometimes it could be about an unusual uh, maybe situation with the throat or the neck uh, at this time um, in some cases too this could be about Taurus uh, friendships or ones that embody Taurus like characteristics ones that might be very loyal steadfast and persistent might figure more prominently in your daily routine than usual maybe in your health in your work life as well um, you might be seeing unusual behavior out of pets at this time if you do have any and also too this could be about the formulation of some kind of new financial idea or plan which might get you some kind of um maybe some freedom and independence in terms of your employment and you might maybe decide to branch out uh perhaps uh, maybe doing your own business as an example and getting you know maybe to get you out of what you're doing in your daily routine uh so as far as your employment goes anyway anyway um well the next thing up is neptune will be in pisces uh still so the fourth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted at this time uh for sag this could be about 
some confounding and confusing situations in one's home and family life at this time. There might even be a flooding in the home or in some cases or maybe some uh, some danger of some uh, chem accidental chemical assimilation in the home such as radon. It could be a time where your family situation might be dissipating and dissolving. There might be something very nebulous and unclear regarding your uh, roots and traditions and also about maybe um, it could be about where compassion can meet foundations uh, at this time as well and you might even be somewhat confused about who you are at the core uh, at this time but on, on another note you can be this could be a good time for maybe doing something Neptune like out of the home such as something with photography chemistry uh, doing magic such as like we're doing uh, we're doing things connected with what a magician would do um, magic tricks uh, could be the metaphysical which of course can include astrology things of a spiritual nature as well at this time maybe even poetry um, anyway well, the next thing up is Pluto will be in Capricorn still. So the second house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. At this time, I know a lot of you don't want me to say this, but you know I do it anyway. Uh, the dreaded D word. They could just sometimes this could reflect the death of maybe somebody that might be prominent in the place you generate income, or maybe uh, factors in strongly with your possessions and your resources at this time. Uh, also, too, this could be about really maybe in some cases the obliteration or destruction of certain values, or maybe in, in some cases it could be uh, money uh, in some cases as well. But remember that Pluto is the planet of regeneration and rebirth. So in, in ways, you know, if you... Uh, if, sir, if something that you're doing in connection in terms of generating income is destroyed, often it can be supplanted and replaced with Plutonian energy and wind up you can wind up doing something else in terms of generating income. You might feel at this time too that maybe your uh, self-esteem and self-worth might be might be destroyed uh, as well uh, at this time. And even maybe things that you value, you might be obliterating and tearing down at this time, but only to perhaps be replaced and supplanted with something uh, new later on. So anyway, well, the next thing up is um, the North Node uh, will be in Leo still. So the Ninth House is what will be emphasized and highlighted. So at this time for Sagittarius, well, when you're talking about the North Node in transit, this could be about issues that one may have to address and confront. So it could be about confronting um, perhaps an arrogant, domineering, bombastic, flamboyant, uh, even pretentious, maybe in-law or grandchild. It could be a foreigner that you know or someone you know at a religious congregation or even um, maybe someone at a college university. Uh, this could be a time, too, where you might have to, it's about maybe being directed toward being more generous and magnanimous with in-laws and grandchildren at your church, perhaps if you do belong to one, being more giving. And even it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, in a monetary sense. It could be just simply about giving more uh, of your time and also taking pride, having dignity in your philosophies and having and really the self-assuredness and confidence to be able to express them with a lot of conviction. And it might also be about having to be a little more extravagant regarding certain ninth house matters, such as maybe if you have to spend some money toward publishing or it could be higher education and, and also wanting attention and recognition, perhaps for maybe things you do publish and even uh, and maybe even from in-laws and grandchildren at this time or maybe even some work you might do for a church in some cases or for foreigners perhaps next thing up is uh the black moon will, will still be in capricorn so the second house is what will be emphasized and highlighted at this time uh for sagittarius well um, well, the Black Moon Lilith can often be about what might put one in a strong state of fear or trepidation. And in this case, it could be simply maybe uh, relinquishing that authority, 
maybe at that place where you generate uh, income and maybe that authority, so to speak, over your possessions and resources. It could be a time where you might be expressing maybe an overly possessive attitude toward towards certain things in general, toward uh, you know your possessions, your resources. And also, too, this could be about maybe somebody at that place you generate income that might be uh, showing a lot of tyrannical, ruthless, overambitious, cold, and callous qualities at this time as well. And when you're talking about the Black Moon Wolf as well, it could also be about a revelation or unveiling of something about yourself that you didn't want to come out of the bag, but it does come out of the bag, so to speak. It could be, in some cases, uh, a very maybe a limiting or restricting financial or monetary situation or maybe a very limited uh, self-esteem and restricted self-esteem and self-worth which is obviously causing you to be very pessimistic could be where it's causing a lot of despondency and making you feel very melancholy and sad at this time and sometimes this could also manifest in uh, the revelation or unveiling of a, a formidable Capricorn adversary it could be a Capricorn Sun Moon or Ascendant or simply one that simply embodies Capricorn like characteristics it could have a strong impact on your self-worth self-esteem uh, maybe even it might be somebody involved somehow in your own uh, possessions or, or the place where you generate income so anyway Last but not least, uh, Chiron will be in Aries still, so the fifth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. So at this time uh, for Sag, this could be in some cases about, uh, we're talking about um, Chiron and Aries, it could be about the unworthiness, and you might feel that maybe you don't feel worthy of having maybe a romantic partner or love in your life or even enjoyment uh, for that matter it could be where you know even even maybe if you have a child maybe you don't feel even worthy of having that connection with him or her or chill or your children in general if you have more than one it could be about dealing with acrimonious and contentious maybe even combative situations in some cases with romantic partners with lovers um, it could be with children, it could be with people that you share some kind of uh, creative endeavor with or some kind of thing connected with fun and amusement. And also, too, the way this could manifest as well, uh, this could also be about maybe not maybe being confrontational enough regarding children, regarding lovers, perhaps romantic partners, and maybe even not... Uh, really take capitalizing on opportunities being a more being more not being aggressive and assertive enough perhaps in a way and and not in in, in finding and really in finding ways to enjoy yourself and capitalizing on those opportunities and uh as far as that goes but remember that when we're talking about chiron and aries and and, and i mean you're talking about the wounded healer and in, in Chiron in general, I should say, I'm sorry, when you're talking about Chiron, it's the wounded healer. So in ways that um, as far as this goes, Chiron and Aries in the fifth house that one may be having struggles with or going through some kind of uh, emotional suffering, uh, you could actually help others in comparable situations and do so with a lot of Aries like courage, fortitude, enterprise, aggressiveness, and assertiveness. Anyway, people, that'll conclude this YouTube astrological segment for my Sagittarius July 2018 horoscope forecast. Stay tuned next time where I'll be giving you my Capricorn July 2018 horoscope forecast. Two things I want to get with you on before I head out. Firstly, the stars may impel but do not compel. And secondly, never isolate any single astrological element, aspect, planetary placement, position, configuration, influence, or what have you, and make an analysis of a person, astrologically speaking, based on this alone, because astrologically speaking, the person is the sum of all their components in their natal chart, and not just one. Until next time, people, stay well.